Hi everybody, uh, my name is Dr. Howe. I teach here at Marymount University in the English department. I teach EN 340, Major Women Writers, and um, I teach that course through the lens of 17th and 18th century women writers. One of the things that really interests me about the 18th century is how much it resembles our modern world. This is the era of revolution, uh, of modern economic systems and politics. It's the era of mass culture. Most of our modern ideas of gender can be traced back to this period in time, and even the concept of shopping emerged during the 18th century. In fact, there's a, a lot of the 18th century in the 21st, and that's what makes it so fascinating to study. This is the time in history when women writers began to make their voices heard in the public marketplace of print, and that has real implications for us today, where women's voices are often still marginalized, especially in the digital world. So in EN 340, we look at women's writing from the 18th century uh, precisely because it is so familiar to our modern experience. Um, some of the authors that we study include Jane Austen, Aphra Bain, Eliza Haywood, uh, poets like Anne Finch, Mary Chudley, Elizabeth Thomas, and then early feminists uh, like Mary Astle and Mary Wollstonecraft, whose vindication of the rights of women still resonates today. So we're going to be reading a variety of significant works by women writers who explore topics like gender inequality, marriage and physical pleasure, material culture, and the male-dominated world of print and publishing, um, exploring throughout what it meant to write as a woman in the 18th century. But of course, it's often hard for us to put this writing into context, given that the past is the past. How can we return this history to our present? In my Global Classroom course, we'll spend a week exploring some of the material contexts of women's writing by traveling to London, the center of the print world in the 18th century, uh, and then spending some time in Chawton, where Jane Austen lived and worked for the last part of her life, before finally moving on to Bath, an 18th century resort town that Austen actually hated, but which features very visibly in the consciousness of many writers from the time period. We're going to be spending our spring break exploring the domestic spaces of 18th century life, learning how books were made, and engaging the fashion and the material world of the period as important contexts that help women writers make their voices heard. Some of the things that we do include visiting Kenwood House, um, which has as its backyard almost the entirety of Hampstead Heath, um, to see how the wealthy and the privileged live. Uh, and we contrast that with middle and working class living conditions that are preserved in the Dennis Seavers house located in the Spitalfields uh, Silk District. We think about the global impact of England in the 18th century uh, by pairing our reading of Aphra Bain's Orinoco um, with a curry in Brick Lane. One of the most exciting events that we participate in is a workshop on 18th century printing at the St. Bride Print Foundation, which allows you to see what it physically meant to publish something in the period. Um, and this is paired with a tour of the printing center around the city. By doing this, we gain some real insights into what it meant to write as a woman in the 18th century. So if you want to tackle some challenging, exciting literature, um, if you want to bring it to life through travel and earn core credit, then I really hope you'll consider joining us.